here's the deal. Here's what's good about the video. It shows he didn't pull the trigger. The bad thing is that John may not be totally uninvolved. What's the complaint about? It says that you smacked her in the face and that you hit her with a broomstick. None of that happened. Who called the police? I'm not sure. I'm asking that Mr. Spencer be released. Judge, the defendant is considered a high flight risk. He's being charged with possession of a gun. I think these cops did something shady. There's no way that he's seeing the guy's head coming out that window. I want you to take a picture of me in that position. Put it simply, when people ask me what I do for a living, uh, I say it this way. When you get arrested, you have a right to remain silent. Anything you say can and will be used against you, and it will. I promise you that. You have a right to an attorney. If you can't afford one, one will be provided to you. I'm that guy. As a public defender, I defend the Fourth, Fifth, and Sixth Amendments of the Constitution. In 1956, Charlton Comics came out with the Public Defender in Action series. And I was like, I gotta get these. I have one in my office and I have four in the crib here. Public Defender in Action. That's what we do, man. It's a nice day for an investigation. All right, let's do it. It's gorgeous out. So we have Richard Bush. He's being charged with possession of a gun. He has a long history of criminal cases. However, in this case, he was staying at his friend's house, Orlando Rivera, and Orlando was out, and cops were there to investigate an unrelated incident. And the cops say that they see Richard put in a bag with a gun on the fire escape, and they busted into the apartment, and they found a gun, and they're trying to blame Richard for it. Tomorrow, I'm gonna to be cross-examining the police officers who took part in this arrest. So we're gonna go out today and we're gonna go look at the scene. We're gonna take some pictures. Jeff's here now, my investigator. How many rides have you and I been out like this? <laughs> Hundreds. Hundreds. My investigation is in my blood. I was a correctional officer for 16 years. Basically, everything that the detectives do, we do. Visiting crime scenes, taking pictures, going to police labs, and our job is to find the truth and bring about justice. You can win a lot of your cases at the investigation level. Jeff has probably found more witnesses and have changed the makeup of a trial. I find that there's three sides. There's the defendant side, there's the complaining witness side, and then there's the truth. In this case, Richard was offered one and a half to three years in upstate prison, and he declined that offer against my advice. And when you have prior violent felonies and you pick up another felony that's violent, you're facing a maximum of life in jail. Richard has been incarcerated now for just about a year. He's written me a number of letters to fight on his behalf, and this is what he said. If I was truly guilty, I would have taken the one and a half to three years quickly, but I didn't do it. So I hope and pray that you give this case a good amount of consideration to, so that we can win together. Thank you, Richard Bush. And he writes, happy holidays. Let me call a friend of Richard's who's gonna show us a little bit lay of the land. Hey, how are you? We're just a few minutes away, so maybe if you wanna meet us, that'll be great. I got a black tie on. Yes, I am. But he's like, are you Caucasian? I'm like, yes, I am. He's like, well, we don't have too many Caucasians around here, so. <laughs> and what's this area about? Is this a pretty dangerous area? Uh, it can be. Is there some heat? <laughs> Marcia, Jay-Z, that's right, Hova. Marcy Projects. Bring it. Welcome to Bed Do or die, Bed Stuy. There we go. Jesus. Five cops to take that one guy. It's from the same precinct. What's up, man? Thanks for meeting me, man. Nah, no problem, no problem, no problem. How you been? I'm all right, you sir. Good. So this is what's going on. Richard's hearing is on tomorrow. Richard tells me that these cops just broke on in there. What did he tell well, you? He told me the same thing. He said that they came in there, broke in the house, asked him to step outside, search the place, went on the fire escape, they retrieved a the weapon. I think these cops did something shady. Now, Richard doesn't live here, right? No, he doesn't live here. Orlando Rivera. Well, uh, he was the person that was renting the apartment. OK. I'm Adam. I work at the Legal Aid Society. How are you? Okay. This is, this is Jeff. I represent a guy by the name of Richard Bush. You know him? Mm -hmm. Okay. Do you know anything about what happened? <laughs> oh, about them harassing people for the shooting outside? Mm -hmm. So there was a shooting that occurred sometime in the summer, and as a result, the police presence got heavier? Yeah. And when you say they're harassing people, what do you mean by that? Picking up people for no apparent reason, just 
if they feel like you was involved, that's what they did. They pick you up. Yeah. Tell you know about it, things like that. He wasn't even outside that day, so it was like, why? Just you think there's no question that this wasn't Richard's gun? No question. You know what I want to do? I want to go on the fire escape. Okay. So this is definitely 2C, right? Yeah. Cops say that they see Richard put a gun in a bag and leave the bag on the fire escape. There's no way that he's seeing the guy's head coming out that window. Can you see the window? No. This notion that somehow that provided the probable cause to go up the stairs. Their whole case is that I see some guy putting some random bag on a fire escape. It just, it's bull. Richard's been in jail for almost a year. It really means a lot, you know, that Adam is coming this far. I want you to take a picture of me in that position. Okay. Are you ready to catch this? Yeah. You got some skills? We'll just drop it on you. Ah. This is classic right here. Let's see if I can come down without killing myself. Oh. All right. Let's do it. There's no way you can see anything about that. I wouldn't even be able to see the person standing there. So this is gonna be good for tomorrow. This will be really good. Hi, people. Hi. Hi. All right, guys, hey, thank you. Okay, no problem, yeah. Okay. I'll, I'll right. be in touch. Thank All you. Right, Jeff. So tomorrow, at trial, showing those pictures to jurors, I think will have an impact. asking for a limited order of protection because my client's girlfriend heavily relies on him to take care of the child. Judge, we do object. I used to be an editor at a fashion magazine and then decided to go to law school to become a public defender and have not left since. A lot of the younger attorneys meet up after work and I remember finding myself in the very beginning, everyone was telling stories and they were using penal law codes. Like I had this 220.03 client and the judge didn't want an ROR in 17070. And I looked around, I said, what, like, who could possibly like us? Let me get my notices in order. It's a lot of paperwork. <laughs> we kill trees. Arraignments are probably the most important part of the case because you meet your client, you get facts while they're still fresh. It determines your release, it determines your bail. All right, Kings County Criminal Court, part A1 is now in session. I'm about to go interview a person who's got two cases. One's an open container case, and the other, a domestic violence case. It was stopped because of an open container. They did a warrant check. They found out he has a domestic violence charge from before. His girlfriend, who I have not spoken to yet, she's the complainant. She's in court on his behalf. So I have to try to figure out what's really going on. Tyroy Spencer. Hi, yes, how, how are you? My name is Aida Leisenring. Here's my card. So here's the deal. Today is not about proving your innocence, yeah. all right? Today is about getting you released. Yeah. You're charged with two things. I'm not really concerned about the consumption of alcohol in public. What I'm really concerned about is the domestic violence case. What's the complaint about? It says that you punched your girlfriend in the face and neck, and that you smacked her in the face, and that you hit her with a broomstick and that she suffered swelling and bruising. And that's what the cops wrote on their police report. You're charged with a misdemeanor, okay, not a felony. Do you remember that day? Yeah, but none of that happened. You both lived there, right? Yeah. Were you guys arguing? We argued. I broke the car window. Somebody made a complaint about me. You're saying someone else filed a complaint. That's what I'm trying to tell okay. you. She told the cops that I don't, I don't know nothing. Okay. And he assists on writing that. Do you know who called the police? The store owner. I broke the car glass outside. Whose car was it? Uh, it's my car. Okay, we've got Savannah out in the audience for you, so I'll talk to her and then we'll take it from there. I'm gonna see if she wants to prosecute, if the allegations are true or false. 
because this is important information to give to the judge, especially if you're trying to get someone out of jail. Ms. Glover, yes. I'm an attorney. I represent Mr. Spencer. I'm well, not filing no charges. Well, let me ask you this. Who called the police? I'm not sure. Was there a lot of yelling and arguing? Yeah, so I guess someone contacted the police. They knocked on the door. How long have you guys been together? For four years. OK, do you have any kids in common? One. One. How old? Eight months. Now, do you have a boy or girl? A boy. How is he with him? Beautiful. OK. Is there any history of violence? No. It's never got physical. Anything we went through, we always been able to pan it out. In this case, were you hurt? No. Did you go to the hospital? No. And what did you say when police knocked on the door? I told him we had gotten to an altercation. He had, we calmed, we diffused the situation, he left, and that was that. Since that day, you guys have been staying and living together without any problem. Yeah, he helps me 100%. Like, he's my means to go to school, he babysits. We actually seek treatment at Kings County Outpatient Family Treatment oh, really? and Therapy. Good. This is so helpful. All right. 10 minutes ago, I had a different idea of what was going on with these cases. Now, things have changed. The most frustrating thing about this case is gonna be trying to get a limited order of protection because that's three months that you can't go home, you can't talk to your wife, you can't you know, see the child without a family court order allowing you to do so. That's a huge imposition in people's lives. So it's pretty clear to me she doesn't want to press charges, that she wasn't injured, that she didn't go to the hospital, all right? So those are good things, but Here's the bad stuff. The DA can keep the case open for 90 days. Yeah, I know that. They're going to ask for a full order. Most judges are going to grant a full order protection. Yeah. That means your life for the next three months is going to be difficult. So the most important thing today is to get you out, number yes. one. Number two, to get a limited order so you can live uh, at home. Yeah. That's going to be the real challenge, OK? Yeah. All right, see you out there. My strategy is to convince the judge that they've got things under control. It's been over a month without incident, and they've been going to therapy. Justice would not be served by having him incarcerated. Hopefully, the judge will see that, too. Hi, Roy Spencer. Uh, Your Honor, with respect to the case docket ending in 043941, people consent to ACD. He accepts. Mr. Spencer? Yes, ma'am. As to the instant case for consumption of alcohol, in public, if you stay out of trouble for the next six months, the case will be dismissed and sealed. Okay. As to the domestic violence matter, there is no offer and requesting a full order of protection for Savona Glover. During an argument, the defendant punched CW about the head and neck and smacked CW about the face and struck CW with a broomstick about the forearm. Judge, the defendant is considered a high flight risk and people are asking for $1,000 bail. Counselor? Your Honor, I'm asking that Mr. Spencer be released on his own recognizance for various reasons. The complainant is here in the audience. It's very clear to me that she doesn't wish to pursue charges. They have no history of domestic violence. She wasn't injured in the current case. She did not call 911. They have been living together for over a month now with no new incidents. In fact, because they have an eight-month-old in common, they have been receiving family counseling not because the court has told them to go, but because they're doing the right thing. Additionally, I'm asking for a limited order of protection because my client's girlfriend heavily relies on him to take care of the child while she's also trying to attend school and because they're getting therapy at Kingsborough Hospital. Uh, judge, we do object to a limited order. We'd like to state that the people are technically bringing this case, and regardless of whether or not the CW is cooperative, it's the people's case. Uh, Judge, I'd just like to say, if you do so issue the full order of protection, um, I think the CW should be escorted out of the courtroom. Also, I'm aware that she's in the audience. Mr. Spencer? Yes, ma'am. This case is scheduled for June 27, 2012. Defendant is released on his own recognizance. As to the order of protection, on issue a full order of protection. Would the court consider making it subject only to family counseling? Counselor, without any proof or documentation to show that they're actually taking family counseling. I'm issuing a full stay away order of protection. You're to have no contact at all with Ms. Glover. You're not to go near her, near her home, work, school, place of business, or anywhere that you think she might be. Do you understand that? Yes, Between, on the next court date, bring the documentation. This way, the, the order of protection can be modified. Thank you. All right?
Oh, yo, you can't be out here. We got you out, that was number one. And she was open to the possibility of a limited order with proof that you've been receiving counseling. Yeah, if I can okay. go get the paper myself too. Yeah, you can I absolutely can bring it do to that, you but right. you cannot call Savannah. Right. Any questions? No, I appreciate what you've done. Thank okay, you. Okay, take care, All right. bye. The good news is Mr. Spencer got out. The bad news is he can't go home. When they give something, that means they take it, son. They let me free, but I can't see my family. To put somebody through that for three months, I mean, imagine not being able to see your wife, your kid, for three months. We want to make it more the norm that families aren't broken up over a case that everybody knows is ultimately going to get dismissed. Every single one of these witnesses has spoken with the DA. John had no gun in his hand, right? A man's freedom has been taken away. Now what we're trying to do is give it back. You know, over the years, I've made some lasting friendships with a lot of my clients. They put their trust in a guy that they don't know from Adam, you know, pun intended. When you get a free lawyer, you have no choice. I don't take that for granted. I have a guy going before the grand jury today, and I have to meet with the family right now, and hopefully we have enough evidence to get him out of jail. I just spoke with John, he's good, his spirits are up. A couple things. In this building right now, there are about 10 courtrooms filled with about 20 people. And what their job is is one thing, to vote on whether or not there are enough pieces of the evidence to go forward as a felony. I'm trying to convince this DA, and she's a very reasonable DA, to not go forward with the indictment today. That's my number one concern right now, is getting him out. This is what happened. Police say last Wednesday there was a physical altercation between John and the complaining witness. John went home that night and everything was cool. No police, no nothing. The next day at around 2 o'clock, the neighborhood hears about three to four gunshots. And the guy gets shot in the left flank. Now the guy's blaming it on John. I feel like you're guilty until proven innocent because if you have to sit in jail and wait until you, your evidence to show that you're innocent, I don't, this justice system is just crazy. You guys have how many kids? Two. Keep asking me. Where's dad? Yeah. I don't want to talk about that. I don't want to talk about no, that. No, no, I'm sorry. I didn't mean to bring up something that's <laughs> tough. You all right? Mm-hmm. Well, you're doing great. I'm blown away by the amount of, you know, involvement that, that the people are, are here, you know, fighting on behalf of John. We've got John's wife. We also have three neighbors who hear and see outside John standing in front of their house at 2 o'clock. When you heard those shots, John had no gun in his hand. No. Right? No. And he was standing there with Reuben, right? Yes. OK. Every single one of these witnesses has spoken with the DA and said, this is what happened. And it's an all consistent story. We also have a video that you got from a neighbor. Yes. From his camera, right? Yes. So that the district attorney can look at the video to determine whether or not it shows that John had anything to do with the shooting. There's a lot at stake. This guy's a 22-year-old kid who's looking at a lot, a lot of time for something that looks pretty clear he didn't do. You guys are doing a wonderful thing for her and for John, all right? This is what it's all about, all right? This is gathering the truth so that he can get out. The urgency here is that a man's freedom has been taken away and that what we're trying to do is give it back as soon as we can. You guys hang out. I'm going to go talk with the DA. We'll get this video thing figured out. Okay. Uh -huh. yeah. Excellent. Excellent. All right. One of my neighbors have video showing my husband just basically not shooting the dude, not being involved, not having a firearm on him. And that's the evidence so he could be released. All right, here's the deal. The good thing for us is this. Here's what's good about the video. It shows he didn't pull the trigger, OK? The bad thing about the video is that it shows that John may not be totally uninvolved. 
if they charging him with shooting the dude, and it does not show him shooting the dude, he, he should be a, 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 a quitting. But the problem is this. If it's just simply just John not having anything to do with it, that's fine, but right. it doesn't look like that. The night before they get in a fight, is there, John is there. The next day, they're outside. They're right there at that corner. And then runs up in that direction for about 45 seconds. He's gone, and we don't know what happened down the block. And these two other guys, Ruben and John, are just sitting there watching. Let's just say John had authorized it or had something to do with the involvement no, of it. No, he did not authorize that. Well, but it's not clear from the video. Right. It looks like he's a part of it. The video completely exonerates him from actually shooting. But this video could work 